Hi, and welcome back. Today's block that we're going to work on in the Dear Jane quilt is block I-8, also called Pete's Paint Box. The fabrics I've decided to use in this quilt is this pink fabric with a bunch of little bunnies all over. And as my background fabric, once again, the muslin fabric. Let's take a look at how I'm planning on making this block. You can do a couple different ways, and one would be to cut this center square and then measure and cut uh, more squares and cut them on, di on the diagonal and increasing that as you go. I am actually going to do a different method and do paper piecing. So I'm going to start with a center square of my muslin fabric. And then I will follow this pattern of the muslin and then four of my foundation fabric, which is that pink, and then going through the muslin and then again the foundation of the pink. I will do the paper piecing up until these outer triangles here. Then for each of these sections, what I will probably do is piece these sections and then trim them and sew them on. I've made a copy of my pattern that I'm going to be following. The center square needs to be the muslin fabric. And I will take my muslin fabric and just do a little dab of glue. I can, I can see very faintly my lines of the muslin square in the middle. So just that slight dab of glue will actually hold my muslin square in place. And then I flip it over and with paper piecing on the machine, you can sew right through that line, but I'm not going to be doing that on hand piecing. So on that line, I'm going to fold this back, and that's where I'm going to create my quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now I'll trim that off. And when I trim that off, then I will get a piece of my foundation fabric and sew it as if paper piecing. I had to readjust my fabric because I actually didn't have it lined up properly. To line it up, I put that on there and then I hold up my fabric, my paper like this up to the light. Then I can see the light shine through and see the border around my fabric. I hadn't done that, so it got off. But now it's the right position, and I've got it glued on there. Now I can redo this. You can see it's got a better seam allowance there, and it's exactly the length that I need to be. Now I will take my fabric and line up the seams, right sides together. And I flip it over just so I can see where I am at the paper, because this is the line that I'm going to be sewing. I'm gonna be sewing right against that paper. Now I've pinned directly through the paper so that it keeps my fabric from shifting. I've pressed this first piece, but I also put a pin in just to keep my piece from moving. The glue stick really wasn't holding as well. I think it's because I use it for my wool piecing and so there's probably too much in the way. But as you can see, I have way more fabric than what I need. Generally when I do that, that's just so I have enough to work with. And I know this is the only section that we need that fabric for. So I'm going to trim away this extra piece here. So 
So now I can use this for the other side. Now to do the paper piecing, we don't do opposite sides, we just go around. So I have this triangle ready, that side. At this point, I made a mistake in where I was folding and then trimming my fabric, but it was not irreparable, and I do figure it out. Wait a minute. Okay. I'm getting confused on what I'm doing. <laughs> so here, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take just half a second here. I know I have muslin here, this is my foundation, or this is my focus fabric. Then muslin and focus. Okay. It is too easy to get kind of lost on what fabric is going where, especially when it's all just the same. So I've colored in where my focus fabric needs to be. So now I have this piece and I'm going to sew a piece over here. So that means I am marking this side and it, that's already a quarter of an inch. So that means I will line this up and pin this and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did for my other piece. I now have all four sides sewn on. I'm going to flip this over and our next step will be to be trimming and sewing on the muslin for these sections here. So let me show you with this first one. I would put my straight edge here so I can draw my quarter of an inch. I'll trim that and now I will get my piece of muslin to pin there. just as I did with the last round of the pieces. I'm pinning this muslin fabric to my piece there, and now I will stitch right along that line. That's now stitched on, and when I flip that back, you can see it just comes right to that point so beautifully. So I'm going to press that. Now I'm going to follow the same method for all three. We now have the second round of the pieces sewn on in the muslin. I'm going to flip this over. So what we have is the muslin, foundation fabric in the muslin. Now we're going to do one more round of paper piecing these triangles, but switching over to the foundation fabric. So to do this part, to set this up for this foundation fabric, I will put my straight edge there and fold it over and use this ruler to mark that quarter inch seam. Now I can trim that and I have my straight edge to start sewing my foundation fabric to each side. I now have my foundation fabric sewn on. Now let's flip this over just so we can see what's going on here. Basically, I've sewn from this section inside. So we've got this entire center completely done. Now it's time to work on these outer sections, which are gonna be uh, dealt with a little bit differently. The first thing I'm gonna do is trim up the edges here so that those can be ready to be sewn. 
So like I've done with all the other ones, take my hard edge so I can fold it over and mark my quarter inch line. And that's what I'm going to be cutting off. So I'm just going to do each corner here. going to end up doing a lot of paper piecing um, I would recommend this add a quarter ruler this ruler is really helpful you can measure without having this special ruler you just use a regular ruler something like this and you just line it up to mark that quarter of an inch but what's really nice about this add a quarter ruler it has a ledge here. You can see the thickness. It's hard in this to see the ledge, but there is a ledge there so that when you are lining something up, such as this, I could do that with my quarter of an inch and I'd have to hold it really still and then cut and this can slide. My rulers like to slide, especially if you're on paper. It's very slippery. But having this quarter of an inch has that edge. Where it butts right up to that edge there and it doesn't move. It doesn't shift so that I can, with these I'm drawing them by line, but if I was on my cutting mat I could just use my rotary cutter and cut right along the edge there. So if you're thinking of doing a lot of paper piecing this add a quarter ruler is really invaluable. And I just got it at my quilt shop. Oh golly, um, probably at least 10 years ago. You could probably order it online too. The center of my block is now finished and I've got it trimmed and ready to start sewing the next section on. So you can see how that looks. It looks really nice, but I'm gonna flip this over so I can see what the next parts are. And you'll notice that on each of these corners, there is a triangle and then two strips. So in looking at this little printout, you can see that these triangles are gonna be out of my foundation fabric. So once again, I'm just going to mark that so I don't get confused. So it's going to be out of my foundation fabric. And then these strips here are going to be out of the muslin background fabric. Now, to do these triangles, I can actually use some of the cutoffs from the paper piecing I just did. So I can have this triangle here, and you can see it lines up nicely there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this triangle and have a strip of the muslin on one side. I'm going to make sure that strip is, let's measure this. So this ends up being one and an eighth inch. So I'm going to make sure that my strips are one and a quarter inches wide. So cut a strip that's one and a quarter inches wide and sew it onto one side and then I'll press and have another strip cut to cover the whole length there also one and a quarter inches wide. So let's do the first one and see how that turns out. I have one corner unit sewn and pressed but now I need to trim it to size and you might laugh at the way I'm doing it, but I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. I have a very hard time with measuring things that are on the angle. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a pin right in the corner part of my triangle there. 
and I'm going to pin right through the corner of the triangle on the paper. Okay, so there they are. They're pinned right through. Now I'm going to also pin the edge here so I know uh, roughly about there. I'm going to pin right through that and then pin onto my fabric there. Okay, so with these two pins, I am going to just pin them through the paper. Okay, now when I look at this side, I'm going to lift it up. My pin, I can match it here. So this piece is on there. It's lined up. Now I need to make that line of where this is. Since I can see my line, I can hold it over and draw a line. Now, if you don't have a way to do that, I'm going to move my pins so that I will have, I'm moving the pins so that the point isn't in the way of folding up my fabric. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Okay. So there's that. It's pinned on there. Because I've done folding before, I folded it to trim, folding my fabric. Okay, so I have my triangle here. I folded it. Now, this is where that stitching line would be. But I need to, just like I've done with all of the other paper piecing parts, I'm just going to draw this line. All right. Now, what that means is I can remove this and I can trim that seam off. So I'll remove these pins. Trust me, this will work. At least I hope it will. <laughs> all right going to trim right along that line that I just drew. Now I have this piece ready to sew on. And that means now I can line this up and pin that down. My point, I look will be right there. So my point will line up with the point in the triangle down below. And then I can pin this and stitch along that line. But before I pin that on, I'm actually going to make three more of these. Now that I have this trimmed to size, I can use this as my template for trimming the other three. So let's make three more of these corner units. My four corner units are now sewn and uh, pressed and ready to be sewn into my block. So here is my block. I'm going to remove it from the paper. And now we just kind of line up these parts so you can see which, you know, the basic layout of what that's going to look like. So the way that I'm going to be sewing these on is sewing two opposite ones and then pressing them. And when I sew those, We'll have the ends here that I will trim off so we have a nice straight line and then sew the last two sides on there. So let's first start with these two opposite ones. Now when we're sewing, when we're pinning these on, 
I'm basically lining up the point of this triangle with the rest of the points that follow on down. So when I line this up, I have my raw edges together and I'm lining it up so that the point of my triangle is actually lining up with the point of that square that's right in the center. So this is one side, I will pin that and stitch that line and then stitch the other side. We've got two of the corners done. Now we'll stitch on the other two. All the bits are now sewn together on my block and it's ready to be trimmed. So I will just line my ruler up. You can see it matches, it lines up right in the center here. And the lines go mostly through the corners. <laughs> um, like many other blocks, um, it's not exact, but it will be close enough. So let me trim this block and we'll show you the finished one. And there we have our finished block. This was block I-8 also called Pete's Paint Box. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough on how to make this block using the paper piece folded method. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below or send me an email at soitseemscreations at outlook.com. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe and you can click that notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload a video, which is every Monday. This is Veronica Johnson with So It Seems, and thanks for watching.